We're now going to talk about limits of functions of more than one variable. And for definiteness, we'll begin with the case of functions of two variables. So let f be a function on a domain d in R2. So definition The expression limit as xy goes to a, b of f of xy equals l means the following. Now this is perhaps a little bit difficult, but as mathematicians we need a precise definition of what this means. If we don't have a precise definition, then maybe I say the limit is 3 and you say the limit is 4 and there's no way to decide which of us is right. So here's the precise definition. It means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero, such that if xy is in the domain d, and xy is not equal to the point ab, and the distance from xy to ab is less than delta, so the formula for that is the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of xy minus l, that is the distance from the number f of xy to the number l, is guaranteed to be less than epsilon. So that's the definition. So intuitively, here's what's going on. You could think of epsilon as an error tolerance. So suppose I want to guarantee that f of xy is within distance epsilon of l. Well, the definition says that I can guarantee that by requiring xy to be sufficiently close to ab. And sufficiently close means within distance delta. So you can think of delta as how close xy needs to be to ab to guarantee that f of xy is within the error tolerance of L. So this definition says if you give me any error tolerance, no matter how small, as long as it's positive, there's some delta, so that by requiring xy to be within distance delta of AB, I'm guaranteeing that f of xy is within distance epsilon of l. So for epsilon equals, say, 1, there's some delta. For epsilon equals 1 over a million, there's also a delta, which is going to be smaller. But there's always a delta. So to see how this plays out, let's prove a simple example. So example, let's prove that the limit as xy goes to 0, 0 of 2x equals 0. Now, this is sort of intuitively obvious, because as x and y are both going to 0, then x is in particular is going to 0, and so 2x is going to 0. But intuition's not enough. We need rigorous proof. So let's prove this using the definition. So given epsilon greater than 0, we need to find delta greater than zero such that if xy is in the domain, well everything's in the domain, so I don't have, that's sort of redundant, so that if xy is not equal to zero, zero, and this also won't really be that important, um, and 
the square root of x squared plus y squared is less than delta, then the absolute value of 2x is less than epsilon. So if we look at this and think a little bit, we're given epsilon, we have to cleverly choose a delta that will work. So let's choose delta to be epsilon over 2. So this works because if the square root of x squared plus y squared is less, less than epsilon over 2, well then the absolute value of x, well that's the square root of x squared, right? And that's less than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that's less than epsilon over 2. And so then multiplying by 2, I get that the absolute value of 2x is less than epsilon, which is what I want. So here my er error tolerance is epsilon. Since we're multiplying by 2, in order to guarantee that we're within that error tolerance, we actually have to be twice as close. So delta has to be epsilon over 2. You could also take delta be, to be something smaller than epsilon over 2, and that would also work. So that's an example of proving that a limit exists using the definition. Now, most of the time, you don't actually need to go down to the level of the epsilon delta definition to prove something about limits. So in the next lecture statement, we're going to look at some properties of limits that will allow you to work with limits without having to think about the epsilons and the deltas.